Hello, good day everyone. My name is Christine Samara and I will be your teacher at Purposive Communication. So for today, we will have the first lesson, of course, an introduction. Okay, so here are the intended learning outcomes for the subject or for the first lesson. So of course, at the end of the lesson, first you are expected to be able to describe the nature elements and functions of verbal and nonverbal communication. Next, you are also expected to be able to ex explain how, cultu how cultural and global issues affect communication. And lastly, of course, you are also expected to appreciate the impact of communication on society and on the world. Okay, so for uh, this lesson, you are, or we are going to talk about the communication processes, the principles and ethics, and of course, the communication and globalization. But of course, before we delve into our lesson, uh, we, I would like first to talk about what you can see on the screen. I'm sure all of you have a hint of uh, what is this all about? Okay, and how is it related to our lesson? Because as you know, we are, our lesson is about, or our subject is about purposive communication. So how are Ryan Banks and Yang Constantinus' story related to it? Okay, about last month, I guess, or a few weeks ago, uh, these two uh, personalities in the showbiz industry have trended when Miss Yang revealed on a noontime show about their story. And it has really sparked a lot of uh, uh, people, okay, and some of them making their own opinions and, you know, sharing their own stories, which is about, you know, how the communication, how communication is important okay not only in relationship but also on the other aspects so miss yang revealed that about 10 or 12 years ago uh, ryan bang used to court her and she felt killing you know uh, she felt so happy when uh, ryan bang always give him some coffee and then one day ryan bang suddenly stops and yang kept on wondering uh, what happened so uh, it was only now at this year 2022 when the real reason behind what mr. Ryan Bang did was revealed and as we all know I guess uh, he stopped because he thought that Yen doesn't like him and on the other side, Yang thought that Ryan might have been tired and that's why uh, their supposed to be relationship did not work out well. So, okay, so from that, we know that they really lack the communication okay, to communicate their feelings and their thoughts to one another that's why it didn't work out that well okay so that's only an introduction or an overview about what we are going to talk about today okay so first okay we know that uh, we are all constantly exchanging and receiving communications so problems arise when the message sent in the communication is not received or understood as intended or or when a nonverbal message is sent subconsciously that contradicts the spoken word so for, for this lesson it aims to help the students okay like you to understand the value of effective communication skills not only at the school at work but wherever you go Okay, so it will focus on the understanding of communication and its components. Okay, and of course, like what we have mentioned a while ago, the process and elements of communication and the principles behind it. And lastly, of course, the ethics. Okay, according to Alexander, communication occurs when a sender 
expresses an emotion or feeling, okay, or generates an idea or senses need to communicate. So when the sender makes conscious or unconscious decision to share the message with another person, which is the receiver, okay, so the communication process begins. This one. Okay, so uh, communication, as we know, is the process of exchanging information between two or more people. Okay, so another author or another scholar have backed up this notion of communication and he defined it as the process of transmitting okay, information and common understanding from one person to another. Okay, so both of them, both the sender and the receiver must be able to exchange information and understand each other for communication to be successful. Okay, so, so it will fail, communication will fail if this flow of information is disrupted or blocked. Okay, so later on, I will give you uh, three working definitions for communication, but let us first uh, delve into the uh, root word in for us to be able to understand more um, what communication is okay so it came from the greek word or latin word communis okay which means common okay so in our everyday living for a communication to be effectively transmitted elements of communication must be present okay and this include speaker which this one, which is represented by this girl wearing the green uh, long sleeves, and then of course the mass the message that they transmit, the receiver which is represented by this man wearing a orange shirt, and then the channel, the feedback, and of course the communicative situation. Okay. So according to the author that we mentioned a while ago, which is Alexander, every communicative act is based on something that conveys meaning. Okay? And that conveyance is the message. Okay? So the message can be either spoken or oral and written. Okay? So or it can be also nonverbal. Uh, Nonverbal communication includes our body language, okay, physical appearance, or uh, vocal tone. Okay, so messages may also emerge from the communications contexts of place and time. Okay, so for example, uh, if you choose to make a critical remark to someone, the place and time you choose to make to make that remark will have a significant impact on how that remark is received. Okay, uh, imagine you and your friend are in a uh, beauty competition and then you told her that she does not look at her best this night or that day of the competition. Imagine what or how your friend will receive, uh, will perceive that message that you told her okay so it can lead her to lose her confidence because uh, the, the time that you said it is not really the right time for you to make a remark or maybe a joke like that okay so furthermore every message is sent and received using one of our five senses on and you know i'm sure the five senses okay the sight the hear the touch taste and smell okay so communication channels are the sensory media through which um, messages are sent and received so so when the message is received okay so by seeing hearing and such the receiver will usually give feedback okay to or feedback or return message either unconsciously or consciously okay so as a result the process of communication is still in progress 
The worst assumption a message sender can make is that the message will be received in its original format. Because there are so many things that can go wrong during the communication process. Okay, so we should always assume that something will go wrong and take steps to avoid it. Okay, so there are always obstacles in the way of effective communication. So for example, the language itself can be a barrier. Okay, it includes the unclear wording, slang, jargon, and tone. So these factors can lead to ineffective communication, okay? So another stumbling block is the sender's failure to recognize that his or her body language may contradict the spoken message, okay? So it's possible that the channel through which the message was delivered was incorrect, okay? For example, you won't use the telephone to relay a lot of statistical data. Okay, instead, what you need to do is to write it down. So let us talk about some facts in communication first, okay? And the first one is that we are social beings and we have the need to express our thoughts, our feelings, doubts, and so on. Okay, so these needs to express and to be listened to are actually basic or innate in all of us okay but one uh, english poet named Matt ben johnson said that the ability to speak and the ability to speak so well are two different things okay so when we say speaking well okay it is comparable to any skill in the sense that it can be developed and enhanced so all you have to do is to expose yourself to various speaking situations okay so listen well and study how effective speakers express themselves okay uh, one way for you to develop and en enhance your speaking uh, skills is of course um, maybe joining some debates or some impromptu speech or maybe uh, just doing this you know um, recording yourself and speaking in English so you can develop there your speaking skills okay so you can uh, watch in YouTube some uh, speakers some good speakers and then you can listen or learn from their strengths and practice whenever opportunities arise because you know practice makes perfect okay so there you go okay it's a little bit too late but okay so as you can see here if it is to be it is up to me okay and as much as 75 percent of the average person's day is spent in communicating okay so now uh, let's go to the definitions of communication okay so uh, as i've said earlier we are going to talk about uh, the three definitions of communication and the first one is that communication is a process by which we assign and convey meaning in an attempt to create shared understanding okay so in order for us to create an, a shared understanding between the speaker and receiver okay uh, it requires a uh, and list a repertoire of skills so for instance we need the skills of observing of listening speaking questioning analyzing and evaluating so for example you are talking to someone and you are not paying attention you are not listening to him or her then you cannot get his intended meaning okay so for you to be effective communicator or for an effective communication to exist this list of repertoires i've mentioned should be done okay so let's go to the second definition so the second meaning is that communication can be seen as processes of information transmission governed by the three levels of semiotic rules which are the syntactic pragmatic 
in semantic. Okay, let us try to learn or review these three levels. Okay, so the first one we have the syntactic. Okay, so syntactic or syntax okay, is the study of sentence structure and the rules of grammar. Okay, so let's start with this sentence. Okay, for example, uh, the sentence will be the through pasture that chased a dog rabbit. Okay, so using the normal rules of syntax, our uh, example uh, means nothing. Okay, but if you try to rearrange its, uh, each words in a new order, they can make a perfect syntactical sense. Okay, so when we rearrange that, it can be the dog chased a rabbit through the pasture. Okay, so that's the syntactic. Okay, now let's have the semantic. Okay, so semantic refers to the meaning of a sentence. Okay, so pay attention to this because uh, it can be, uh, maybe you can get confused with pragmatic when you uh, forget uh, the definition of this one. Okay, so without proper semantics and a thoughtful, grammatically correct ordering of words, the meaning of a sentence would be completely different, okay? So, for example, uh, semantics can change the meaning of a sentence with the order of words. So, let's, uh, let us consider the sentence, she tossed the ball. And the other sentence, the ball tossed her, okay? So, in the first, the subject of the sentence is actively tossing a ball while in the latter she is the one being tossed by a ball okay so that is why semantic is important okay so uh, let's have pragmatic so pragmatic is also the study of uh, the meaning of sentences within a, cer a certain context okay so it looks beyond the literal meaning of an utterance of a sentence, okay? So, for example, if you were told to corrupt the window and the room was a little stuffy and the speaker had just said uh, prior to this that they were feeling like a little warm, then you would know pragmatically that the speaker would like you to open the window a crack or just a little. So if you were with a friend who was locked out of his home and you were standing at the back door trying to get inside, your friend might say crack that window and literally mean to put a crack in the window or break the window. So you can see uh, the context impacts the meaning to be constructed. Okay, so communication in summary um, is the act of passing news information and uh, the act of uh, sharing of or exchanging thoughts ideas feelings with other or with a group and or it is the act of participating with or sharing in common though we belong to same feeling okay so now uh, there are also other uh, scholars with, uh, who try to define the communication. And we can see here, okay, so communication is the sum of all things. Okay, telling, listening, and understanding, okay, can also be, according to Henry Kant's, transferring of information. According to George Terry, it is the exchange of ideals, feelings, thoughts, and such, as well as the emotions. And for Keith Davis, it is the purpose of passing information and understanding between two persons. So in summary, communication is everything but what we do every day, okay? The moment we wake up until we sleep. Okay, so we will know more okay, about the explanation of this on the next slides. Okay, so now, let's talk about the types of communication. And first, we have the communication according to mode. And it is letter A, the verbal communication. And the 
verbal communication can be divided into uh, two subtypes as well. And the first one will be the oral. Okay, and the other one is the written verbal communication. So when we say oral, I think you are all familiar with this. Okay, so spoken words are used. Okay, it includes face-to-face, -face, uh, speech, or telephonic conversation, or video. Okay, when we FaceTime or call through messenger with our friends, it is also considered as the oral verbal communication. Radio, uh, television, or voice over internet. Okay, so here communication is influenced by pitch, volume, speed and clarity of speaking okay so now uh, before we go to the next page I would, I would just like to clarify what verbal communication is okay so verbal communication okay, is the process again of sending and receiving messages with words okay including writing and sign language okay so it is transmitted verbally okay and it is done by word of mouth and a piece of writing okay so oral is just like what you already know okay you speak sinasabi mo siya okay and verbal communication in terms of oral communication has its it advantages and disadvantages okay so the first one we have of course um when it is oral it brings quick feedback of course okay imagine you are talking to someone so you can uh, get the response of that person as quickly as possible so you can get the feedback so for example you are talking to someone and uh, he is annoyed by you so you can get that uh, uh, emotion you can receive that message that he or she would like to convey okay that he is annoyed okay by you right so that is just quick when you are in a face-to-face -face context or setting another one is that uh, in a face-to-face -face conversation by reading facial expression and body language one can guess whether he or she should trust what's being said or not okay so we are all actually uh experiencing this one right when we are talking to someone and we are guessing uh, whether this person is saying uh, facts or buffs okay so we can observe them through their body language and facial expressions okay another one is in a face-to-face -face conversation by reading facial expression and body language one can guess whether he or she should trust what's being said or not okay so uh, imagine when you are talking to someone and then you feel like uh, that person is not saying what is true okay. so through the facial expressions and body language uh, you can make a guess okay or feeling whether that person can be trusted or not okay there is actually one study that says uh, if you would like to catch if the person is lying to you you should observe if he can make eye contact to you so if he cannot make an eye contact to you while you, you two are talking and that he keeps on looking at left or right okay that person might be lying okay so that is one advantage of oral communication okay so uh, let's have another one. It saves time in communication. I'm sorry. Okay, it saves time in communication. Well, of course, as compared to when we are talking to someone, for example, through messenger, and then we are uh, we are talking to some important matter, and then you uh, the tendency is you cannot get the feedback that or response that you would like to get as soon as possible but when we are in a face-to-face -face setting and you are talking next to someone 
about the important matter, then that saves time. Okay, so another one is it provides complete understanding of communication delivered and there is a chance to make it clearer in case of doubts in interpretation of words or ideas. Okay, so uh, it just simply said that if you would like to clarify something being said um, by someone you're talking to, then uh, you can make it uh, right away can make it right away you can clarify um, maybe uh, for example uh, someone for me it's for example uh, when you are talking to me in, per, uh, in a face-to-face -face situation in a person situation and then uh, I speak slowly or maybe my words are not clear then if it is orally if uh, in given our situation, you can clarify it to me right away. You know, you can say, uh, ano po yun, ma'am? Or, uh, ano po ulit? Pwede po ulitin yung sinabi nyo. Okay, so that's one advantage. Okay, next, uh, it is a more reliable method of communication because you cannot fake uh, what you feel during the time that you are talking to someone. Okay, orally, okay, as compared to uh, chatting to someone uh, through messenger, for example, uh, you are talking to your uh, romantic partner, to your boyfriend or girlfriend, and then uh, the two of you got into a fight, and then uh, when through messenger, for example, you can uh, tell him or her that you are not hurt. Okay, by his actions, by her actions, okay, but uh, you are actually faking it and he doesn't have an idea about it because you cannot see each other, okay, you are just communicating through the device that you are using, but when we are in oral situation, of course, okay, given again the face-to-face -face conversation, okay, uh, it can not, you can, you can say that uh, you are not hurt by his actions, but uh, when your facial expressions uh, says otherwise, then we can uh, quickly uh, say that uh, saying uh, your real feelings, okay, and you can confirm that right away, okay, so it is more reliable because it is already there, okay, it is what it is, okay, so it is also a powerful means of persuasion and control, Okay, uh, yes, okay, I think uh, this can also be a downside, but of course, um, let's look at the advantage first, okay? So, for example, through an uh, oral or a face to face conversation, given the situation that uh, in a classroom setting, for example, uh, we can communicate orally and that I can uh, have the control or the authority between you guys okay or among you uh, among you students okay um, as compared to i want to express my authority through the messenger okay some of you may just uh, ignore my message and you know it is um, it is a disadvantage and the last one will be it is a cheaper way of communication and hence saves money of, co of course you don't have to spend money when you talk to someone for example you cannot say that i'll pay you five pesos just tell me uh, the answer or just respond to what i am saying okay so and that person cannot keep quiet for a long time Okay, and wait for your five pesos payment. Okay, because we do that. Because uh, we doesn't do that. Okay, and it hence saves money. Okay, so don't worry. We will discuss the written uh, verbal communication as well, and the uh, comparisons that we made here will be more clearer when we discuss it. Okay, so now let's go to the disadvantages. Uh, disadvantage. Okay, so the first one will be it has issues when communicating with distant people. Okay, so yes, it can be hard for us to communicate or to talk to someone uh, who are distant. Uh, when we are using uh, the verbal communication because the tendency is that that 
person may not actually uh, want to talk to you or just ignore you and you will just look uh, full okay in a foolish situation okay so another one is that emotions are visible and hence leads to trouble in certain cases so we already discussed this a while ago uh, when emotions are visible because we cannot fake it okay so yeah it can lead us to uh, some trouble for example imagine uh, talking to someone and then uh, your conversation heated no uh, and that other person becomes so angry and then that emotion could actually uh, heat up the conversation that you have and there is a possibility that that person's uh, emotion can hurt you okay can hurt all the both of you okay all right let's have another one uh, it does not provide permanent record unless it is recorded with modern means of storage okay that is why um, when we look at its good side you say something and then someone tries to use that against you you can ask him first where is your evidence okay did i say that okay so it does not you can deny it as long as you want and that person cannot do anything unless he or she recorded um, that conversation between you two but we have a, a standard rule that we cannot record uh, some conversation without the permission of the other person so you know when we uh, when it is oral communication uh, unless it is recorded we it is not it okay, cannot provide a permanent record okay and the last one that we have here is that there is a chance of leak of secret information with the help of modern devices such as polygraph or lie detector okay so some uh, people use this lie detector test to prove something okay that they want okay so we can see this on uh, celebrities actually on televisions so it can be a source of uh, yeah secret uh, information link okay because we do not intend to reveal that to someone because it's a secret okay but because of that we don't have the choice and be open to the public right now let's have another type of verbal communication now let's go to the written communication okay so as we uh, see here okay uh, written signs or symbols are used to communicate okay. writing signs include uh, the period the question mark uh, the exclamation point comma uh, ellipsis and so on okay so following their correct usage will make your writing easier to read and more appealing and symbols on the other hand are often characters the settings the images or the other models that stand in for bigger ideas written verbal communication includes the emails okay the gmail the yahoo mail um, some internet websites or social media sites such as the facebook the twitter instagram and so on it also includes the traditional one for example the letters okay the proposals okay telegrams uh, the google classroom okay contracts ads brochures and a lot more okay so uh, written communication is most common form of communication being used in business okay now let's just like what we did in the oral communication let us study each advantages and disadvantages okay first one is that messages can be edited and revised okay so of course that's true okay for example uh, when I uh, when I assigned you an assignment and then you are not satisfied about it then before you pass it you can uh, edit it out and revise your work okay and it can be uh, a better output as compared to the oral verbal communication wherein when you say something and you did not think about it first uh, it happened that you hurt someone you cannot take it back 
the damage has been done. Okay, so that's the advantage of uh, written as compared to the oral communication. Okay, now let's have another one is that uh, it provides a record and a backup. Of course, because it's written, you can save uh, your works through Google Drive like that or to your computer archive and then uh, those serves as, you know, permanent record and backup. Okay, it's just there whenever you need. So, for example, uh, you are looking for the file that uh, you made two years ago and then you needed it now. Okay, you can just look back or look it up on your documents and then there you go. can help you this time around again. Right. Another advantage is that uh, it enables the receiver to fully understand it and send appropriate feedback. Okay, so for example, when I check your assignments or your outputs, okay, I can fully understand what you are doing and then I can provide the feedback uh, just like what I did uh, last time for my past students. Okay, so whenever they send their assignments, I uh, message each of them to, to give them the feedback on their improvements. Another advantage is that it is easy to preserve. Okay, so the documents of written communication are easy to preserve. So if it is needed, important information can be collected from the preserved documents. So this is just the uh, same with the second advantage. Okay, and it's also the same with the permanent record and of course use as a reference. Okay, so for examples on the books, uh, when you do your research, your teacher always asks you to use uh, your references in order to compare some studies. Okay, so now let's go to the disadvantages. Okay, so the first one is the lack of secrecy. Okay, why? Okay, because written communication is exposed to everyone who is concerned with the message or information. Okay, so there is a chance of leakage of information from any employees if you are working and from any other students or friends. For example, uh, as compared to oral communication, when you want to talk to someone about a secret, you can just talk to that person alone. Okay, but in written communication, when you write it down on a letter, that person has a tendency to share it to others. Okay, remember when you were high school and then you sent a Valentine's letter to your crush, and then you thought that it's just between you and your crush, but then it happens that your crush asked his friends to read it as well. And so there you go. There is no secrecy. The, now your secret has been revealed. Okay. Now let's also have another one. Written communication is uh, comparatively expensive because it uses paper, uh, pen, ink, and it sometimes also re uh, requires a computer. Now another one is that it is uh, time consuming okay when you have an important matter and then you message or you convey the message through the messenger and that person is not online okay so it's a waste of time waiting for their replies Another one is that lack of flexibility okay so there are some uh, predetermined uh, formalities that are required to be maintained while making written communication Okay. So, observation of such formalities is a lengthy process. Okay. If any immediate change is required, it is not possible instantly due to the lack of flexibility in written communication. Okay. So, what we mean here is that when we are uh, sending a message through the messenger, the uh, SMS, or Gmail, okay? So, there are formats, different formats that are in these three uh, platforms, okay? For example, you cannot just say your message right away in the Gmail as compared to your uh, message in Messenger. Uh, because in Gmail, you have to be more formal, okay? So there is a format, okay? For example, at the top, you will put first the greetings, okay? Or hi, sir, or madam, and then 
the follow uh, sentence will be greetings and then the follow sentence will be your intention okay i am christine blah blah and i am writing to request blah 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 and then at the end you will say uh, thank you very much for your time attached here read is my uh, document in blah blah and then afterwards you are going to uh, put our regards or sincerely yours and then your name and like in messenger that you can just uh, type right away what you would like to uh, convey right and you don't uh, actually need to put your name because it's already there okay so that's the lack of flexibility and i would also like to add the late feedback okay so when the receiver opens the message okay and reads it very attentively taking it more time okay so when he responds to your message it takes some additional time to answer it there is also a tendency that he can forget about it okay just like the most of us we are waiting for some replies but the reality is that we haven't sent a message yet to the person that we are waiting our reply from let's have the uh, letter b the nonverbal communication okay so nonverbal communication is the sending or receiving of wordless messages okay so it includes the body language the gesture the posture tone of voice facial expressions so remember the difference is that it is wordless okay it has three elements okay we have the appearance okay for example for the speaker so it includes the clothing the hairstyle uh, neatness use of cosmetics another one is that appearance surrounding so it can be the room size lighting decorations and furnishings okay so it is critical Okay, to the successful transmission of a message in oral forms of communication. For example, you are going to attend an interview for a job. Okay, so which one would you prefer? To wear or dress lousy or to dress or wear neatly? Of course, you would choose the second one because impression, uh, first impressions last. Okay? And that says about uh, that says a lot about your personality and attitude that can affect performance in the job interview. Okay, that is uh, how much the appearance can make an impact to the meaning that we want to convey. Okay, now now let's have the body language, and it includes the facial expressions, gestures, and postures okay so this body language particularly the first one the facial expressions can reveal important information that isn't conveyed verbally okay so facial expressions are especially useful because they can reveal hidden emotions okay that contradicts uh, statements made by uh, the speaker okay for example uh, a student Okay, may deny knowledge of a problem while also displaying a fearful expression and guilty looking ground around okay so the posture and gestures are two other types of body language that can provide communication clues all right so finally we have the sounds which, is, uh, which includes the tone the volume and the speech rates or the speaker's voice okay so it also includes laughing or throat clearing you know when i <clears throat> like that and then uh, humming okay hmm? and can convey different meanings okay so it's also worth noting that a listener's impressions are influenced by uh, perfume or the other others okay as well as the physical contact between the speaker and the listener okay another one is also the silence or the absence of sound okay it can also be a type of nonverbal communication and in a face-to-face -face conversation silence can convey a lot of understanding or even hurt feelings okay okay so imagine when you are talking to someone and you are not answering it can convey that you can either be hurt by what he or she said 
or you're just not in the mood to talk to that person okay or in the situation okay now let's go to the types of communication according to mode again we have the visual communication okay it is the type of uh, communication that use visuals of course to convey information or messages okay it includes the symbols the signs the image pictures maps graphs charts and the like okay so it occupies an uh, important place in anywhere you go uh, for example in, when you travel you have to be familiar with the symbols or the road signs okay because it communicates something okay it can communicate danger or um, some accidents okay so that conveys communication it can also uh, you can also see some signs when you go to uh, a school and then it writes a school zone okay that conveys uh, a meaning again that you have to drive slowly or uh, be extra careful now uh, whenever you go okay just observe at the pictures uh, the signs and symbols and that conveys a meaning that needs to be understood okay so let's take a look at its advantages again and disadvantages so we just listed here a few and for the first one uh, it aids understanding okay so the use of image okay to communicate and understand the world around us has exploded as a result of technological advancements okay so another uh, advantage is it supports oral communication okay so when visual aids are used oral communication improves okay as so when a student an uh, education student is doing his or her demo it can be noted that he is not just speaking but he is also providing some visual aids okay some drawings or uh, some symbols some signs in order to improve the message or to uh, be able to understand the message okay or the lesson that he is uh, transmitting to the listeners okay it is also the same with uh, what we are doing now okay we uh, we add pictures or videos in our presentation okay let's now go to the disadvantages and its first one is design issues okay so if a visual aid is not properly designed for its intended use and audience then it can cause a communication breakdown okay so another one is that it distracts from the message so when a visual aid is with the wrong information, then that can cause a distraction and detract from the message the image is supposed to convey. Okay. Now, uh, let's have the types of communication according to context. So we have the first interpersonal communication. So it can be defined as a communication with oneself, okay? And that may include self-talk acts of imagination and visualization okay and it can also include recall and memory okay so uh intrapersonal communication from the word intra it means within or inside okay so intrapersonal communication okay can be labeled as okay self-talk or inner talk Okay, inner dialogue. Okay, psychologists uh, call it with names such as self verbalization or self statement. Okay, so now uh, let's have this situation or an example of interpersonal communication. Okay, so you read on your phone that your friends are going to have dinner at your favorite restaurant. Okay, what comes to mind? Okay, sights, sounds, and scents. Okay, something special that happened the last time you were there. Okay, do you contemplate joining them? Do you start to work out a plan of getting from your present location to the restaurant? Okay, do you send your friends a text asking if they want a company? Okay, until the moment you hit the send button, you are communicating with yourself. Okay. 
Okay, just imagine that. Okay, so, sasama kaya ako, pupunta kaya ako, or busy at ako. Okay, so that is an example of intrapersonal communication. Okay, now let's have the other type. We have the interpersonal communication. Okay, so it can be uh, defined as the uh, communicating between persons. Okay. Alright, so to put it simply, uh, interpersonal communication is the exchange of information among people. Okay, so information, of course, can include thoughts, ideas, feelings, and more. Okay, it can take both verbally or non-verbally, and it can de be developed since we first began communicating as children, and these skills differ from person to person. Okay. We can, however, take steps to improve our communication skills. Okay, so that will be all for today. Thank you so much and I hope you learned something for today.